What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another crypto video. What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another electronics tutorial. In today's video, we are diving into lesson number 14 where we're going to be talking all about the IR, infrared module receiver. So make sure you guys stay tuned until the end of this video because guys, we're at lesson number 14. We're almost halfway through this entire box and then we're gonna start building some awesome projects. But like I told you in the last video, I was going to show you very quickly how to connect your joystick module to your very own radar sensing system. So if you guys saw my last video, I showed you guys exactly how to build this really cool radar module system. Basically, the only thing that I changed, if we come back and look at our code, the only thing that I did was I changed our code i'm not going to make a whole video on it i'm just going to quickly tell you guys how i did it basically what i did was i simply changed our loop of our uh, program if you guys remember in the last version of our loop we had two for loops one for loop which made the servo sweep from zero degrees all the way to 180 degrees and then another loop right after that that did the same thing in reverse from 180 back to zero now the way that we were writing the angle was with the iteration variable, the i variable. I still kept i, I just made it a little different. What I did this time was I set i based on the analog read, which is our A0 pin, if you guys remember. Boom, looking over here, our A0 pin, which controls the X coordinates of our joystick and the A1 analog one pin, which controls the Y direction of our joystick. So I just pulled the A0, which is essentially just the X coordinates of our joystick. I'm reading that data into this joystick variable. And what, what I'm doing is I'm creating a map, just like how we did in the last one, where the map instead of, just like this, the beep interval, where we have the distance variable for a beep which basically we're going from 40 centimeters to zero centimeters. And then we're beeping at a rate of 50 uh, microseconds down to one microsecond. Meaning as we're at 40 centimeters away from the, the sensor, the beep will be at 50 microseconds. As we get closer to zero, the beep will, will go closer to one microsecond. So it beeps faster the closer you get to our ultrasonic sensor. So it's the same exact way it works with the joystick value. Instead, we're going from zero, which is the joystick all the way this way, right? That's zero. Middle is 512, and then all the way this way is 1024, or really 1023. There's 1024 values in the joystick, um, which go from zero to 1023. So that's how we did it, the exact same thing with this map function. So we went joystick value, whatever the joystick value is, 0 to 1023 and then we're mapping those values from 0 to 180 degrees that's all it is it's very simple and then we literally have the exact same code that was inside of the for loop this is literally copied from that for loop just take it outside of the for loop and put it in the regular body of our function so very simple very easy to do take a quick picture of this what I, what I was trying to do last night I couldn't get it to work in the short amount of time that I had free time. I was trying to make it so that when you press down the joystick button, it will turn on and off the beeping function. But I couldn't get it to work last night. Maybe when I do get it to work, I'll make a follow up, just throw it in the intro of the video. But pretty cool stuff. I just wanted to show you guys very quickly how to implement the joystick in your function. So pretty cool, we now have a Sensor module that that works pretty cool, right? So now let's get started with today's lesson, which is lesson number 14, talking all about the IR receiver module. All right, so taking a look at today's lesson, lesson number 14, what we're going to do is we're using an IR remote, right? IR remote. 
uh, which is a great way to have wireless control of your project. Infrared remotes are simple and easy to use. You guys have used these before if you have an old TV. Basically, it uses IR. Nowadays, new ones, I don't think they use IR. I think they use a radio. Or they might even use Wi-Fi. I'm not too sure. IR is kind of an old technology. But anyway, uh, infrared remotes are simple and easy to use. In this tutorial, we will be connecting the IR receiver to the Uno. And then use a library that we designed for this particular sensor. In our sketch, we will have the IR hexadecimal codes that are available on this remote. We will also detect if the code was recognized and also if we are holding down a key. Pretty cool. So what we need for this project is, of course, our Elugu Uno R3. We're going to need our receiver, which I showed you at the beginning of this video. It looks like this. It's a little ball on the front. Looks pretty cool, right? We also need our infrared remote. So make sure that you guys pull out this plastic bit if you plan on actually using it today. And then we need three female to male wire jumpers. So let's get started. Um, basically the introduction of this component, uh, the IR detector are little microchips with a photocell that are tuned to listen to infrared light. They're almost always used for remote control detection. Every TV and DVD player has one of these in the front to listen to the IR signal from the clicker. Inside the remote control is a matching IR LED, which emits IR pulses to tell the TV to turn on or off or change channels. IR light is not visible to the human eye, which means it takes a little more work to test a setup. So there are a few differences between these and say a CDS photocell. IR detectors are specifically filtered for IR light. They're not good at detecting visible light. On the other hand, photocells are good at detecting yellow, green, slash visible light and are not good at IR light. So IR detectors have a demodulator inside that looks for modulated infrared at 38 kilohertz. Just shining an IR LED won't be detected. It has to ha be a pulse width modulation blinking at 38 kilohertz. Photocells do not have any sort of demodulator and can detect any frequency, including DC, within the response speed of the photocell, which is about one kilohertz. Pretty cool. So IR detectors are digital out. Either they detect 38 kilohertz IR signals and low output, zero volts, or they do not detect any and output high, five volt. Photocells act like resistors. The resistance changes depending on how much light they are exposed to. Pretty cool. So here's some graphs you guys can look at. As you can see from these data sheet graphs, the peak frequency detection is at 38 kilohertz. 38, that's the peak. And the peak LED color is 40, or sorry, 490 nanometers. Or sorry, 940 nanometers. 950, it's a little bit to the left, 940, which is the wavelength. You can use from about 35 kilohertz to 41 kilohertz, but the sensitivity will drop off so that it won't detect as well from afar. Likewise, you can use 850 to 1100 nanometer LEDs, but they won't work as well as 900 to 1000. So make sure you get matching LEDs. Check the data, sh check the data sheet for your IR LED to verify the wavelength. Try to get 940 nanometer. Remember 940 is not visible light. Interesting. So this is the schematic. You're gonna have a ground, a v VCC, the volt, basically 5 volt, we're going ground and then we're going into pin 11. This is how we're going to wire it up. So taking a look at this sucker, if you guys can see, there are three letters there. What are they? I think they're G, R, and V. G, R, and Y, sorry. So on this schematic, this wiring diagram, we can see G is the ground, R is Red is the voltage, Y, yellow is pin 11. Now, I don't have those colors, but just use whatever colors you guys got. I'm just going to stick this in, bingo, bingo, and we will remember where we put this. So let's take a look, switch the view, and wire this sucker up. So, taking a look, this is how I decided to wire it. My G is orange, my R is yellow. And my Y is green. And that's because when I pulled these out, I didn't disconnect them because I like the, how they are connected like that. So we're going to leave it like that. So G is ground. We're going to go, go around with the G. We got R, which is supposed to be red, which is supposed to be voltage. You know what? Actually, I'm going to switch these around 
because as you guys can see, I have these two that are right next to each other. It would make sense for me to have those go into the voltage on the ground since they're literally right next to each other. So we got ground is green, voltage is now yellow. Boom. And then Y is going to go into pin number 11. Pretty simple setup. You guys really don't need me to look at this. But boom, we got our pin set up. Bingo, bango. Now we're going to plug this sucker in and get started with the lesson. So we got our thing set up. Let's see what we got to do. So all we got to do is just load up lesson number 14. Like always, just go to wherever your folder is. Mine's on the desktop. Boom, code 14. Boom, there it is. You can close this other one. Wow, there's quite a bit of code here. Very cool. And then we also need to make sure that we install the library. So sketch, include library, add zip library, and then go to the same exact spot that we were just at, lesson number 14. And here it is, just select it, open, boom, should install, and we are ready to rumble. Before you can run this, make sure you have installed IR Remote Library or reinstall it if necessary, otherwise your code won't work. Next, we will move the robot IR Remote out of the library folder. We do this because the library conflicts with the one we will be using. You can just drag it back inside the library folder once you're done programming your microcontroller. Once you have installed the library, just go ahead and restart your IDE software. Okay, let's restart this. Boom. Boom. And run some updates, run it again. Now let's try pressing some buttons, see what happens. Serial monitor. Cool. So it totally works. So as you guys can see, I have my IR device right here. And when I press a button, on here, you will see that a light will flash. You guys can pick that up. I see, I see it a little bit. Maybe let's go to the other camera. Boom. So I press the button. Let's say I press zero. See the light flashing? That is actually a visible LED. It's not infrared. What we are not seeing, maybe the camera can pick it up. No, it can't. Is when I press a button, the LED inside of here, which is infrared, shines the light. It emits the light in all directions. And this sucker picks up this frequency of the light that is being emitted that our eyes cannot pick up. Pretty cool. So we can see that this thing is set up when you press buttons. One. Oh, it looks like I need to program these buttons. Only four works. Interesting. Seven. Eight doesn't work, nine works, five, no, 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 oh, three works, two doesn't, one doesn't, zero doesn't, equal works. So the problem is you need to point this directly at the device. If you don't, what happens is, My guess is that the wavelength changes. As you move it away, it's probably like a phase shift or Doppler effect. Interesting. So all you need to do is just make sure that it is pointing directly at your device. Bingo, bango, and it should work every single time.
So that's pretty much it for this lesson. This thing's pretty cool. We could probably build the exact same functionality as we did with our joystick. Maybe once we press it one way, boom, right? We press it fast forward. Maybe it increases the speed of the device. I don't know. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you guys made it this far, you guys are awesome. Smash the like button, drop a comment down below, blah, 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 blah. Have a great one.